Hey, it's Ramsey Dewey over here in Shanghai, China. Today we have a question from the J Experience who wrote into Q&A with the coach. If you're wondering how to leave questions for Q&A with the coach, please leave them in the comments down below. I read your comments, friends. Or email me at ramseydewey at gmail.com, but I prefer the comments. J says, would it be more effective to train mixed martial arts and become more proficient by training all day, every day for a year? Enough to then compete. All right, a big misconception about good fighters, professional fighters especially, is that they train all day, every day. Is that from sun up to sundown, they are busying themselves, expending these tremendous amounts of energy. And the reality is the best fighters make the best use of their time. And generally speaking, that translates to two workouts a day. Generally break that up into one session of strength and conditioning and one session of technique and sparring. Sometimes fighters will add some extra cross training into that schedule, maybe do a three a day. So if they feel they really need to improve, say, their wrestling or their jiu-jitsu or their boxing, they might add an extra hour, 90 minutes, two hour session of boxing or jiu-jitsu or whatever it is they're, they're trying to accomplish. But all day, every day, if you visit, let's say, one of those live-in Muay Thai camps in Thailand, where the pro Thai fighters train, or a um, sports university in China where they train the Sanda fighters, like the, the high-level Sanda fighters, the China top team over at the Xi'an Sports University, for example. How are those guys training? All day, every day? Well, no. It's three sessions a day, two hours per session, spread out throughout the day. They will train for two hours in the morning, they will eat, they will sleep, they will go and do it again, train for another two hours, eat, sleep, go back, train again, and then they're finished for the day. If you read Jack Dempsey's book, Championship Fighting, he talks about the difference between the schedule of an amateur fighter and a professional fighter. An amateur is going to have to spend, in many ways, more time and effort than the professional. Why? Because they are learning the trade. They're still learning the moves. They're learning how to fight. A professional already knows how to fight. They are fine-tuning those skills. So for an amateur, they are out there learning how to throw better punches, how to throw better kicks, how to do kicks and punches in general, how to do takedowns, how, learning how jiu-jitsu works, how wrestling works, basic things like that. Professionals already know they're developing game plans around that information that they already know. Okay. And so in Jack Dempsey's book, when he talks about the schedule of a professional fighter, professional boxer, back in his day especially, it was not all day, every day. He mentioned a lot of loafing around. You know, you train really hard. You eat. And then you got a lot of downtime. Because if you are beating yourself up constantly, all day long you're not going to be able to do it the next day, or the next day, or the next day, okay? So a professional trains themselves to the point where they are going to improve, but they can do it again the next day, and then the next, and the next, and so on. Again, the, the Rocky training montage, I've said this so many times, but I'll say it again, because I get this question often. Watch my old videos, guys. And not just the highly viewed ones, watch the underrated ones. The Rocky training montage, it's fun to watch. It gets people excited. You see Rocky out there hitting the, the heavy bags, hitting the speed bag, running up the stairs, punching the meat, doing all this stuff, sit-ups and push-ups and pull-ups, and it's exciting. We're like, oh, I want to train like Rocky. And so we go to the gym and we do everything. We hit every machine, every lift, every workout thing we can possibly think think of and then what happens we're really sore and tired the next day and we're like oh, i did so much on monday i'm just gonna sleep it off until next monday and then we don't see serious improvements okay so you have to understand the rocky training montage is meant to be a montage that's not rocky doing it all in one day in one training session those are snippets of the training here and there okay and a lot of professional fighters, you can see 
training montages modeled after the Rocky training montage on YouTube, like look up your favorite UFC fighter and then write training montage and you can probably find it. Probably see them, you know, doing all that crazy stuff all in a five minute clip that's fun to watch with some inspiring music behind it. And don't be tricked, don't be fooled. Again, that's not their everyday workload. It doesn't consist of cramming everything into five minutes. It's spread out intelligently and deliberately into digestible segments that are going to allow them to improve without overtraining. I'm putting that in quotes because that's another term I get asked about a lot. Ramsey, am I overtraining? Am I overtraining? What is overtraining? If I do weightlifting and sparring in the same day, is that overtraining? Okay. Listen to your body. Your body is going to give you better information than I can in regards to that. If you develop your sense of proprioception and your sense of bodily kinesthetic awareness. Did you know you have more than five senses? You know, the sense of sight, the sense of smell, the sense of taste, the sense of hearing, the sense of touch. You have more than that. Proprioception is your ability to sense your own body. For example, close your eyes. Where is your left thumb? Do you know where your left thumb is without touching it, smelling it, hearing it, tasting it? Yeah, you know exactly where it is, right, if you have a left thumb. My, my dad didn't have a left thumb. He, uh, he uh, was... I'm sorry, he, he didn't have... He had a left thumb, he just didn't have his other fingers on his hand. Horrible accident when he was a kid, and then my grandma was uh, missing all the fingers on her right hand except the thumb. So not everybody has thumbs, not everybody has the same digits. Let's be sensitive to the folks out there who, uh, who are working with that. Another thing my dad would, would say, he would get upset and even offended when people would be afraid to say handicapped or words like that. And, and I remember one day he just kind of lost it and he was like, I'm handicapped, hand e capped. Look at my hand. It's a handicap. <laughs> and one of my most uh, memorable moments watching my dad speak. So, uh, yeah. Where were we going with that? So, yeah, not everybody is, uh, is the same, right? <sighs> Don't be fooled by the Rocky training mont montage that is representational, okay? Not an objective reality about how you are supposed to train every day, all day. If you are starting out, if you don't know how to train yourself, set apart a time. doesn't have to be a long time, an hour, 90 minutes, two hours to do some strength and conditioning. If you don't know what that means, look up some really basic compound lifts, squats, deadlifts. You know, you can throw some power clean, some bench press, some pull-ups, some burpees. It doesn't have to be the same thing. In fact, vary it. Vary, you can't do compound lifts every single day, right? You want to do stuff that periodizes your training. If you don't know what that means, look it up, periodize your training so you can do something to get stronger every single day. And if you still don't believe me about the all day, every day thing, and if you think Jack Dempsey was talking out of his butt when he said pro fighters have a lot of downtime, because they're not working, well, at least the high level ones aren't working side jobs generally. And that's another misconception that most pro fighters actually are working full-time in other jobs. Like, fighting is not their day job. I've had a lot of young guys come to me and, uh, and they'll say things like, I want to I train full-time, I'm going to quit my job and do this and that and the other. And I'm like, how are you going to pay for food, man? I mean, you... <laughs> Entry-level fighters are not making a lot of money. They're not. You're not going to make much money, even if you got a UFC contract. Like, entry-level UFC contracts are not high-paying gigs, and generally those guys fight maybe a couple times a year if they're lucky. And some of them are set up really nicely, the mid- to high-level fighters. Not everybody's making Conor McGregor money, only Conor McGregor's making Conor McGregor money, right? But those guys on the undercard, for example... 
Those guys are working hard. Those guys are hustling to make ends meet, man. So don't get stars in your eyes thinking that I can quit my job and go out there and learn how to fight. Yeah, learn how to fight first. Start making money off of fighting first before you even consider letting go of your actual source of income. And that's um, another thing I get asked about a lot is, man, I'll, I'll just make another video about that thing I get asked about a lot because this is going on a while. So all day, every day, meh, boo, bad idea. Short, smart intervals of planned, periodized training that push you in the right direction, that make you stronger, more flexible, more technical every day. And don't tear you down so much you can't do it the next. Yay. Thanks for watching. Now get out there and train.